Welcome to the Rustic Songbird Podcast. I'm your host, Lydia Walker, and you're listening to episode number 78. This podcast is made for independent musicians who want to learn about releasing their own music. And today I have a very special guest on the show. She is a friend of mine. She is a listener of the podcast and she's recently started releasing her own music. I love interviewing people at various points in their experience of the music industry. And my guest today has so much insight. We are talking about her story and she shares about going through a season of loss and grief and how the songs that she's written have ministered healing to her as well as others. We also talk about the healing power of music and how writing through times of grief or loss can be therapeutic and help us to process those difficult seasons in life. I'm so excited to introduce you to my friend, Allison Brost. I hope you enjoy this podcast, this interview. Make sure to check out her new music, and I hope that it inspires you on your journey as well of taking that next step to get your music out there and to be writing songs that will inspire others. I'm so excited that you're listening today. Thank you for being here listening to the Rustic Songbird podcast. I want to invite you to subscribe to this show so you don't miss anything. We have new episodes coming out every single Monday, so hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're an avid listener of this show, I want to invite you to join our Patreon community. This is a way for you to support the show on a monthly basis, starting at just a dollar a month. It all adds up and it's so appreciated. I would love for you to check it out, see if it's a good fit for you. Go to patreon.com slash rustic songbird. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash rustic songbird. All right, let's get started with today's show. My guest on the show today is Allison Brost. She is a singer, songwriter, she is a mom, and I'm so excited to have her on the show today because she's a listener of this podcast, and I've gotten to be friends with her and actually got to meet her in person in Nashville not too long ago. She has just released her first song as an artist, and I'm so, so excited to have her on the show because a lot of listeners are trying to get to this point, and I think you'll be very encouraged by Allison's story. Also, the song that she just put out has an amazing story behind it, and I want you to hear all about it. So, Allison, welcome to the show. Hi, Lydia. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm excited to share your story today, talk about your new music. It's so exciting, and I've loved seeing the behind the scenes of, uh, you know, helping share advice for, you know, whatever you needed in the process, um, just because I've done it a few times, and uh, I yes. love the process, but if you haven't done it before, it is a lot, and so there's there's a lot that goes into it that people don't normally see, and that's what I wanted to go into on the show today, uh, but before we talk about your new music and releasing it and everything, give a little backstory on your songwriting journey and what that's looked like for you. Definitely. So when I grew up, Uh, my grandma played piano and so I would go over to her house and I would plunk away on the keys and and I remember her singing she actually has like on a little old tape recorder some of the songs that I would sing and (laughs) and some of them were you know if you if you touch something that's not yours you know you're gonna get in trouble or something like that (laughs) you know just little little kid stuff so back from the very beginning I was interested in music and I, I really looked up to my grandma so when I was 10, 11, I, I was asking for piano lessons and um, growing up, we just didn't have a ton of money. So something like that was, uh, wasn't, wasn't something that happened right away. So after a couple of years of me asking and requesting that for a Christmas, finally I got piano lessons. And so my dad every week would take me in and I started learning how to play by sheet music, but I really loved to to change. Sometimes I would think, okay, this, you know, I wish they had played this here instead. Um, so I loved learning that way, but before long, like within a couple of months of learning how to play, I was already starting to write my own music or, um, figuring out, I wish this was different. And so I started, um, just writing in notebooks and, um, not really sharing it with a lot of people. I did have one teacher growing up who I would share some of my writing with and, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, I didn't share with, with a ton. Um, 
but my parents were supportive. And so as, as I got older and into probably 16, 17, I actually got into a studio and was able to record some of these songs that I would, that I would be writing and playing. And so that's kind of really where my, where my love started uh, was really just putting a lot of my writing with and figuring out that I loved music too, and then just kind of putting them together. Um, so I'm now in my thirties. So life kind of happened. And at 19, I ended up getting married. And I remember one of my first questions when my husband and I were talking about getting married was, uh, can I still do music? Can I, can I make this happen and get married and have kids? And, you know, sometimes it feels like, well, I don't know if I can do both. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to, how to manage doing both. How can I manage being a wife and being a mom and still getting to do music? But I knew that that was something that Good, it kind of made me who I was. Right. And so that was kind of the, one of the prerequisites for me um, was I really need you to support me in my music and, and what I do. And so, um, so around that time, I actually was one of the uh, worship leaders in our kids church and I would play music and I got our worship leader at our church kind of took me under her wing and taught me how to play by chords. And I found within that, because I, I had come from more of a you know, sheet music, classical structure, mm -hmm. which I was constantly trying to change. But when I discovered chords, I realized, hey, I can play around and there's a little bit more freedom and flexibility. Yeah. And within that, I was able to realize, oh, I can play around with these chords, use these as a base and start writing. And so I started writing and I would introduce some of my songs to the worship uh, director at church. And um, throughout the years, we would do some of my music as well. And that was really awesome for me to get to experience too. That is so cool. And uh, there were several things just in your story right now. I mean, I'm still getting to know you and your backstory. <laughs> yes. um, but one thing you brought up is getting married and wondering what's this going to look like making music mm -hmm. going forward. And I think a lot of people at that point just hang it up as a hobby and they're like, oh, well, I'm too busy now, you know, getting married and becoming a mom, yes. I mean, is a huge change in your life and it's very demanding. And I know for me, becoming a part of a community of women that were moms and also making music was so inspiring to just see what's possible and to know that when they were working on their dreams, their kids are watching that and they're able to see you creating and be on the inside of that. And so I think it's beautiful to be able to make music and also, you know, be in that high calling as a mom. And that's two things that I'm very passionate about is music and motherhood. But I think it's important for people to know that like you do have to make adjustments. And of course, like family should be priority. Um, but there is possibility yes. to do music or art or whatever it is, like you said, it's part of who you are. And so even if you do have to pause like if you're not as busy with music or if you're not touring full-time or you know it might look different being at home bouncing babies and also writing songs yes. uh, but it's so possible there's a lot of opportunity out there and so I want to be an example as well of somebody that uh, is going for it and making beautiful music and also taking care of beautiful babies so um, when you became a mom I know you have several kids now um, but yes. when you became a mom did you find yourself, you know, making up songs with them, like teaching them like your grandma did? You know, I wish I did. I think a lot of my times I would actually kind of just focus on um, taking those nap times and using that to write music. So it mm -hmm. kind of just changed the times of when I would write. Um, I aspire to write music that, um, that would, you know, my kids would enjoy or speak to them. But I tend to write most of my music as a way of probably processing my faith mm -hmm. and, and dealing with those kind of things. I have one song that I have written that is for my kids and I've been writing it for probably nine years. <laughs> so hopefully I finish it here, but yeah, it's, my music for me tends to be something that is about my faith. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of where I tend to write. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Cause the process of like writing out your own thoughts and feelings and processing, uh, your, in your spiritual walk, I think is so mm -hmm. valuable. Um, I know a lot of songs 
that I've written have really deep lyrics because they're based on scripture or they're inspired by a sermon that I heard or a lesson, a life lesson that the Lord is teaching me. So when is it that you normally get your inspiration for writing? Do you see it more as a inward, like thoughtful, reflective time when you're writing? Yes, I, I would say so. It's definitely a way for me to process my feelings. And so I do probably tend to write more. I would definitely say when I'm feeling, um, you know, troubled in some way, mm -hmm. as hard as that is, it's kind of a way for me to, to work through difficult emotions. And so it's almost like um, a devotion, you know, part yeah. of my devotion time. That's so good. I've, I've heard um, Chrissy Nordoff from Brave Worship talking about, uh, you know, mm -hmm. starting a writing session, I mean, maybe not even knowing it's a writing session, but starting <laughs> with, uh, you know, just playing a worship chorus or something familiar first and like get into the presence of the Lord and then write from that place. Um, and yes. so I think coming from a place of devotional or like just spending time with the Lord, whether it's prayer or whether you're, you know, playing some music in the background and then he speaks those words to you and gives you that song. Uh, I think there's so many ways for it to come together, uh, but what does that usually look like for you when you sit down to write? Yes. Um, a lot of times it is exactly that where I just feel like I'm supposed to worship. And so I will start playing, you know, a song that's on my heart that I'm singing. Um, or I have, you know, I just start playing a chord progression and then I just, you know, feel led to go a certain way with it or have certain words that are on my heart. And it, it really is just a place to me of worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that it's a way for you to process and, um, you know, write through the emotion, but also like coming from that foundation of faith and yes, having a yeah. hopeful message and making it relatable but also healing for yourself and for others and especially with your new song that you just came out with it's called above all and yes. you have an amazing story of how that song came together so i'd love for you to share that definitely okay so it was 2017 when i started writing this chorus and it had kind of been a difficult year we were going through some transitions in our family and i had a also had a friend um, who just recently had um, another child with special needs and she already had one with special needs and we had been praying for a safe delivery. And then um, through a series of complications had another child who had some severe um, medical diagnosis and it was just really heartbreaking. And so my heart was just hurting for her and hurting for some of the things that we were going through as a family. And I started writing this chorus. Um, the words are, above all, you are, above all, you are good. Above all, you reign sovereign. Um, above all, you are God. Through it all, I'll worship you. And it's kind of a declaration of faith in the midst of situations that don't feel good, that don't feel like God is sovereign. Um, it was kind of a way of me processing through the truth that, okay, this is my foundation. And I believe that this is true, even when everything else around me is telling something different. Mm. And so I finished that song towards the end of, actually, by the time I finished it fully, it was the beginning of 2018. And in, on January 22nd, um, 2018, I, we welcomed our fifth child. So I was pregnant during the time that I was writing it. And his name was Solomon Paul. He was a sweet little boy, um, just an easy addition to our families. Obviously, being a fifth child, we'd, <laughs> we'd done this a couple of times before. And um, so they, I remember, you know, sitting downstairs in our living room and my kids were upstairs and I'm holding the new baby. We just brought him back from the hospital and my kids are upstairs, you know, fighting over who gets to have a drawer in the bathroom with him. And um, cause our kids share a bathroom <laughs> and, you know, putting like a baby hairbrush and even though he didn't really even hardly need any of that stuff yet, they were all wanting to try to share a drawer with him. It was really sweet. That is sweet. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so the next several weeks passed, you know, just 
just the normal stuff of just having a new baby around the house. Um, it was probably the middle of February. I had a friend come over who wanted to meet him and she shared that she was just going through a tough time. And I felt led to share the song with her that I had just recently decided would be called the above all. So I snapped a picture of the lyrics after I finished singing it and playing it and texted it to her. Well, a week after that Solomon just unexpectedly passed away. Um, and I remember the first couple of days after he passed away, I looked back through my phone because I wanted to look back through pictures and, you know, we had to start thinking about a funeral, which they now, wow. you know, is now a celebration of life, I guess they say. Mm -hmm. So I was going to look through pictures and I stumbled upon that picture that I had sent my friend with the lyrics and the first words of the verse say, my heart is broken. I don't know what to do. God, I cling to you. And it was just like my heart dropped because I knew that those words were for me. And I thought that maybe I'd been writing them for this friend almost. But I realized that God knew that I would need these words, you know, before I knew that I would need them. And yeah. he knew that I would need to remember that he is still good, that he is still sovereign, that he was still God, even you know, even in losing my child and even right now. Yeah. And it would just meant so much to me to have that, that, that foundation that even when I wasn't feeling like it, that he was still there. Yeah. And I mean, in a time where you've just suffered loss, like there, that's not the time when you're probably going to write that song. And the Lord <laughs> knew that and he gave it to you beforehand so that it was there when you needed it. And I mean, such simple lyrics, but so powerful, profound, really, mm -hmm. and something yeah. that could be healing to you in that time. But so many other people can relate as well. Anyone who's, you know, lost someone close and um, especially, you know, the loss of a child or a family m yeah. member and especially unexpected when, when yeah. it comes out of nowhere and you're just like, what is going on? So wow, what an amazing story that that song came, you know, before that tragedy was able to help your friend, but also like you had just taken pictures of it. And then it was in your phone when you were looking at pictures of him and, you know, what a gift that yes. that is. And, um, you know, grief reminds us that, you know, there's something that is, you know, being missed, you know, it, it was um, nothing that you would have chosen but then here you are, you know, and so for the Lord yeah. to minister to you, to your heart, right at the time when you needed it the most is just so special. Yes, it meant so much to me. So, and that's just been a big part of the healing process for me. You know, at first when I lost Solomon, it was in some way, it was really difficult to think about going out and seeing people or standing in front of people or, you know, having to go to the funeral and be the mom standing there and mm -hmm. having everyone feel sorry for you. And, um, and through this process, I think God has made me realize that we all go through grief. We don't all lose a child, but we all go through hard stuff. And, yeah. you know, just having that compassion for other people and having grace and realizing that we all, you know, need that hope that we have in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm so excited that this song is out because I can't wait to hear the stories from other people that have heard it. I want to encourage all the listeners to go and listen to it. Um, it's, it's out on all the streaming platforms now. It's called Above All by Allison Brost. So you can look it up uh, and listen to it. I listened to it several times in a row the day that it came out. I just had it on repeat and I was singing along and just thought, wow, you know, what a good reminder that above all. It doesn't mean like after all, but even through it, above all that we go through, above every situation, God is still sovereign. He's still on the throne. He's still there for us and he's with us. I think that that is such an important thing to remember. Um, I recently sang at a funeral for a member of our church and mm -hmm. um, just seeing the richness of his life and um, you know, being there grieving with the family and, you know, we're suffering the loss of missing someone, but we know that 
they're out of pain. They are in the hands of the Lord and they're in heaven with no more pain and no more uh, of the sorrow that we have in this world. And so there's like this amazing reminder of, yes, life is difficult and we are going to miss them like crazy, but there's something after this and he is still above. He is still in control, even through the most difficult times. Yes. Yeah. So how would you say uh, your writing has changed at this point? Like how you, how you process things and write things on, the, I mean, it is on the other side of it, even though you can never yes. you know, fully, <laughs> uh, fully, I mean, you can have healing yes. from that, but how would you say it's different? Because you have a different perspective now. There's no going For back sure. to how it was before because of all the things that you have learned and processed and um, all of the things that you've grown into through this process. So yes. what does it look like now? Yes. I, I heard a quote that said recently, you don't get through, you don't get over grief, you get through it. Yeah. And I think that's really powerful because you can't escape it. You know, we as humans sometimes try to use ways to escape, whether it's Netflix, you know, sometimes things that aren't even unhealthy, but instead really actually getting through it. I think we do that by, by leaning in Jesus because we just really, there's just so much in this world that we cannot handle on our own. Right. And I think that's, that's really what, what I've learned. And I think it's been really eye opening for me and transformational in that the purpose in my music, you know, I think in our selfish pride, sometimes it's nice to say, Oh my goodness, I have um, so many streams or so much this. And I mean, that's awesome. And even today I was looking and my, my dad had mentioned, well, maybe, maybe she'll want to know about how many streams or things like that. <laughs> And I felt this check in my spirit of just, it's not about the numbers, you know, right. and it's, it's easy to say that, but it really isn't. Um, there's so much more <laughs> yeah, to life so than more. the numbers. Yeah. And why am I doing this? Because it, it really, yes, it's awesome if more people are listening to it, but really it's about, about helping. And I think that's the transformational thing for me is that. I want my writing not to be about, you know, bringing myself glory, but bringing God glory. And mm -hmm. that's really what makes the difference. That is not for me. It's, it's to help other hurting people. And I think that's where my heart and my passion is, is that I've been there where you feel like, I don't know how I'm going to make the next step. I don't know how I'm going to get through the next hour, let alone the next day. And I just want, you know, my music and, and whatever I do to help be an encouragement to others who are struggling and who are hurting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what an amazing opportunity to use music that we've written that has been important and special to us, but also know that someone could hear it right when they need to hear it. And it could bring yes. healing to them with the same message, the same truth that helped through the process that we were going through when we wrote it. So exactly, um, I think it's amazing as a songwriter to have that opportunity to have something that we've created even through the process of grief and healing and uh, to be able to share that with others. Yes. It's such a gift. So you are honoring Solomon's life, sharing his Thank story you. and sharing this song. And um, it's, it's just so special to see that because I know there's much more meaning that goes into this. It's not just a beautiful song with beautiful lyrics, but there's so much to yeah. the story and the message. And that's, um, going to help so many yes. more people and inspire people what would your encouragement be for someone who is writing about their own story I would say um first off bring it to Jesus you know bring bring that story all that pain um all those feelings to Jesus and let him help you through that and then I'm still working on this myself but using those feelings and those emotions um to bring others hope you know coming to a place where we're writing not just for ourselves, but thinking about others and thinking about how other people are going through those hard moments and how can we bring encouragement and hope to people that are struggling? Because I think that's the, the purpose of music that binds us together. We, you know, when we listen to a song, we can kind of internalize it as people. And so to make music, that's not just for us, but for other people as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it gives it a greater purpose. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you said, it's not 
like, hey, look at me, look how great of a songwriter I am, like, look how, look how great of a singer yeah. I am. If that is our goal, then it's pretty shallow. But if there's, yeah. if there's more meaning behind it, I think uh, that gives it so much more purpose. And then even if one person hears it and their heart's changed, then it's worth it. You know, if one exactly. person hears it and they, they feel comforted, then that's the purpose of that song. And I love that you wrote it even before your own situation, but it was already blessing people before you, you know, <laughs> dealt with yes. that loss. And so it's amazing what the Lord can do with our songs. And sometimes they're written before their time. Sometimes they're written and we don't fully understand it until later on yes. in our life. And we go through um, a difficult time and the Lord brings that song back and reminds us with it. And it means something even deeper uh, to us even than we knew when we were writing it yes so i'm so glad that you came on the show to share your story and i love the the music that i've heard so far and just so excited for you putting out your own music and i know a lot of listeners are trying to get to that point of writing yes. and recording and releasing their music it, it is a process tell me about the next song that's coming out and a little bit about um how people can hear it and connect with you online. Awesome. Yes. My next song is called to God be the glory. And it's actually the first song that I wrote, like the first full complete song after losing Solomon. And so it's a little raw and it's really real. And, you know, it asks some of those hard questions like, God, this isn't what I had planned. I don't understand those kind of, that kind of language. And I just hope that in that realness, it can speak to other people that are going through some of those situations where it just doesn't seem to make sense in the moment. It doesn't look good. And they can find hope that, you know, I don't have to understand everything this side of eternity, but God, I can just give you glory. And so that's the theme behind the next song. Um, it'll be released um, in October. And so I Yay. can't wait for you all to hear it. <laughs> And you can connect with me more. I'm on um, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, the songs will be on all the major streaming platforms. So That's so exciting. So uh, give us the name for Instagram so people can look you up and start following your music. Yes, it's Allison S. Brost. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your story on the show today. And thank you for what you're doing as a songwriter, creating beautiful music and uh, you're very inspiring also being a mom and uh, making music in the meantime. So in the, in the cracks <laughs> of motherhood, uh, I really appreciate your time today and being on the show. So thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Lydia. Hey, songbirds. That wraps up another episode of the Rustic Songbird podcast. And I'm so thankful that you're here, that you're listening. I want to invite you to subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already and share it with a friend because sharing is caring. Also, don't forget Rustic Songbird is on Patreon and you can be one of our patrons by going to patreon.com slash rustic songbird and support the show a little bit every month. It adds up and makes a big difference. I appreciate you so much. Have a blessed day and I'll catch you next time on the Rustic Songbird podcast. <laughs>